when we think about examples of altruism, we often think about helpers, right? Like somebody volunteering in a soup kitchen to help serve people, or a good Samaritan who steps in to stop a mugging. Our intuition tells us that these people are altruistic because they're selfless. But what if you found out that the person who was doing that volunteer work was actually paid to work in the soup kitchen, or that the good Samaritan was actually a paid bodyguard? Now they don't seem so altruistic, right? It's a little funny, because if you think about it, either way, the people are doing good deeds. Crime is being prevented, and hungry people are being fed. But we seem to like them better before we found out they were being paid. Our intuition says that altruism should be selfless. And it seems to be the kind of thing that we encourage in others. We encourage our kids to volunteer in a soup kitchen for community service more than we would if it was just poorly paid temp work, right? So our intuition, again, is telling us altruism should be selfless. But what would you think if I told you that despite that intuition, altruism is actually selfish by design? That the reason we have those intuitions is because they're in our own selfish best interest. That might sound depressing. It might seem like a scientist coming to take the heart out of the better angels of our nature. But I promise that's not true. I think that understanding how altruism works in this way can actually give us the tools we need to grow more altruism in the world. To do this trick, we have to separate the proximate from the ultimate design of the mind, two ways of viewing the functional architecture of any evolved system. The proximate question is, how does the mind work in the now? It's about the immediate causes and consequences. The ultimate question, on the other hand, is about why the mind works that way. What was the ancestral utility that caused a mind with that design to be selected by natural selection? If instead of the mind, we were talking about a calculator, the proximate question would be, how does the calculator work? What are the parts? How do they work together? The ultimate question is, why do I have a calculator at all? Why didn't I grab a phone or a camera? It's probably because I had to calculate something. Now, you might think that separating the proximate from the ultimate is merely an academic curiosity, but I promise it's actually useful. To see why, let's consider the case of parental love. It's hard not to look at a mother's love for her child and see it as anything other than selfless. I mean, parents sacrifice their time, their energy. Mothers sacrifice the material of their bodies, all for the sake of their children. And we're not alone. Parents all over the animal kingdom sacrifice for the benefit of their young. Looking at the proximate design of these mechanisms, they certainly look selfless. But what's the ultimate reason why parents have these traits? Offspring that we're invested in are more likely to survive, reproduce, and outcompete their competitors. And the genes supporting parental love aren't just in the parents, but in the offspring as well. So from an ultimate sense, these traits aren't selfless, they're selfish. But let me ask, does understanding a mother's love in this way cheapen it for you at all? Does it make the mother seem less caring, less kind? Does it seem less genuine? Of course not. All I did was flip our focus from the proximate way the mechanism works to the ultimate reason why it works that way. The design of the mechanism is still caring, still compassionate, but understanding of the way the mechanism works can actually give us insight into how the proximate design works. And that's the tool that we need if we're gonna grow more altruism in the world. It turns out that there's nothing unique here about parenting. There's lots of ways that natural selection can craft nice, 
kind, proximate traits that are ultimately selfish. If you help me out one day and I help you out the next, we both win. Reciprocity is proximately kind and ultimately selfish. If we do something together as a team that none of us could do as individuals, we all win. Group collaboration can be proximately kind and ultimately selfish. If you see me be kind to someone or be brave or skillful, and then you choose me to be a friend or an ally, we all win. My actions in the world can be proximately kind and ultimately selfish. Our concern for our friends, our loyalty to our team, our compassion and generosity are all as genuine, heartfelt, and righteous as a mother's love for her child. Understanding their ultimate origins doesn't take that away. But as I said, it gives us those tools that we need to better understand how the proximate design works. And if we want to do something about making the world better, those are probably the levers that we're going to need to pull. To do that, we need to ask the ultimate level question, when should we be nice? There's a lot that we do that seems at first blush like it's selflessly nice. We give our money away to charity, anonymously, and because it's anonymous, we can't be paid back. Sometimes we give a penny when we could just have easily have taken them all. We give up our time to stand in long lines to vote, even when the outcome of most elections is not going to be settled by a single ballot. Now, don't get me wrong. These are all good things. We want people to do them. And probably a lot of what we like about them is that they appear so selfless. But it makes you wonder, right? How can something that appears so selfless stem from an ultimately selfish design? I think the answer is going to come down to a fundamental fact about the world. We often hear that there's nothing certain in life but death and taxes. And if that's the case, the world is pretty full of uncertainty. We have uncertainty about what the future holds. We have uncertainty about how others are going to behave. And we have uncertainty about how long they're going to stay in our lives. Imagine that you don't know me, and I walk up to you on the street and I ask you for help. You have a choice to either help me or not. If you help me, there's a chance I'll pay you back. But that would be hard for, you to, for me to do if I never see you again. If you help me and I don't pay you back because you never see me again, that was wasted effort on your part. But if you don't help me and I would have paid you back, might have become a friend, an ally, a teammate, that was a mistake too. The question is, which of these two mistakes is worse? We can all appreciate that it's proximately kind to be nice to a stranger, but is the reason why we have that impulse because it's ultimately selfish? To find out, I simulated hundreds of thousands of years of evolution in a computer. In the simulation, pairs of individuals were paired up, and they were given the chance to pay a small cost to help out their partner. They had the choice like we did, to help or not. Now, if they help out their partner and their partner turns out to never be seen again, that was a mistake. But just like in the real world, these people couldn't be sure if they would see their partner again or not. To find out the answer that natural selection would choose to this question, we gave each person a gene that controlled the probability that they would be nice even if they thought their partner was just going to be a random stranger. So I'm going to show you some results on this graph. And the vertical axis is the value of that gene, how much they were likely to help, even when they thought their partner was just going to be a fleeting stranger. Because the population of agents reproduced in proportion to the earnings across their lifetime, natural selection could act on the value of this gene over time, driving it to be either nice or not. 
Across millions of simulation runs, I varied how big the gains in trade were. That is, how helpful is it to be helped? And also, how long relationships lasted when, in fact, they did repeat, when it wasn't just a fleeting stranger. And what was the result? What strategy did natural selection pick? This is the strategy that emerged after thousands of years of evolution. As you can see, when the gains in trade are large enough, niceness pays. And when relationships are long enough, niceness pays. This says that what is selfish in the ultimate sense is to be proximately kind. Of course, you can also see that this strategy didn't work well in all situations. Sometimes the gains in trade of being nice or helping or cooperation are low, maybe because there's not much we can do to help each other out, or it's hard to prevent fraud. Sometimes relationships are short because people are moving around or because the world is dangerous and people aren't likely to stick around. Our ancestors lived in worlds like this and like this and all the worlds in between. What that means is that our psychology can't simply assume that one of them is true. Instead, the evolutionary savvy solution is to calibrate your generosity to the kind of world you perceive yourself to be in based on cues to these parameters. Come to think of it, if we look around the world today, we see places that are dangerous, where they're not welcoming to strangers, and places that are have a reputation for being nice and kind. What these results suggest is that these cultural differences don't have to be sticky. They don't have to represent anything intrinsic to the culture or to its people. Instead, these results suggest there are levers we can pull to move these traits around. We have medical interventions that can increase life expectancy. We have policy interventions that can reduce the rate of fraud. We have financial interventions that can give people opportunities to gain specialized skills. This research suggests that these tools can actually pull the levers on our psychology to evoke more cooperative and altruistic norms around the world. But what about the darker side of altruism? When to be mean? Sometimes being mean is actually the virtuous thing to do. Like the Good Samaritan who stands up, right, is being mean to the bully, but she's standing up to help out the victim. It's funny because that Good Samaritan is, we, like we said, not getting anything out of it. It appears selfless. And it's something that we don't just do as individuals. We do it as a nation as well. We send our troops around the world to fight the tyrants and despots that are victimizing their own people. Again, that wasn't us. This looks like virtuous behavior, and it looks selfless. Could that also stem from an ultimately selfish design? I think the answer to this question again is going to return to an understanding of the world as uncertain. In this case, we have uncertainty over at least two things. We have uncertainty over the future value that the victim might represent, and uncertainty over the future threat that the bully represents. A bully who demonstrates a capacity for harming at one victim suggests a capacity for harming you too. And they might be especially likely to think they can get away with it if you don't show them otherwise. And if, as we saw before, it can be in your ultimate self-interest to be nice to a stranger, it stands to reason it also might be in your ultimate self-interest to stand up for their interests to test whether these are in fact the levers that control when the Good Samaritan stands up, I recruited groups of subjects to come to my lab. Imagine you're one of them. You and two others come to my lab for a study, and you're each given your own role with your own decisions to make. The first person is given $10 and the choice to share some of that money with the second person. The second person has no money and no say in what the first person does. Let's say that the first person sees that the first, second person is powerless and decides to keep all that money. Now, the third person, after seeing what the first person did, is given their own 
and they have the choice to punish. They can spend some of that money to destroy money that the first person kept. Let me ask, would you feel like you wanted to do that? Some of my subjects certainly do. And it's interesting, because if you look at the facts on the ground, this is a selfless behavior. The punisher doesn't become any better off by spending money, right? But remember, this mechanism might be proximately selfish, selfless, excuse me, but the levers that control it, if we're right, are going to be ultimately selfish. In my experiments, we've tested whether people are responsive to cues over those two features of uncertainty that I mentioned. Recall that we have uncertainty over the future threat that that first person represents. That first person who demonstrates an unwillingness to share with someone else might be unwilling to share with us too. I found that when punishers suspect that that's the case, they're the most likely to punish. Remember also that that second person is objectively a stranger, but could be thought of as a future friend, or someone like you, or a future teammate. I found that when we've manipulated the study to encourage that inference on the part of the punisher, they're especially likely to punish, to defend the interests of this valued other. So we see again that just like in the case of altruistic niceness, altruistic punishment seems to be proximately selfless, but ultimately selfish. Let me ask again, does this change how much we value this behavior? I don't think it should. The good Samaritan is still good, as long as that loving mother is still loving. But what it can do is give us insight into the levers that we can pull to engage moral concern when it's useful, and maybe even to turn it off when it's not. There are victims around the world that need our help. It seems like more and more our help is just not showing up. This research suggests that there are ultimately selfish levers that we can pull to engage more human support for a humanitarian intervention as long as we can pull those ultimately selfish levers cast their enemies as our enemies. How they would treat them suggests how they would treat us. We've seen that human nature is full of better angels. Mechanisms that are there that are approximately kind, compassionate, and generous. They're altruistic. But we've seen that that Altruism, that selflessness, exists only in the proximate design. At the ultimate level, the reason those mechanisms are there is because they were ultimately selfish. Why does that matter? Because if altruism is not just something you want to think about, but actually cultivate, if you want to grow a culture of collaboration in your business, if you want to grow economies that can pull people out of poverty, if you want to leverage the power of the human potential to the fullest extent, it helps to know what levers to pull, why those levers are there, and what happens when you pull them. Thank you. <laughs>